Hello everybody, I'm back again with, it, with another video on electronics and this video will be on transistors. So on the left here you have an NPN transistor with a base emitter and collector and if you look at the collector current versus the collector emitter voltage you get curves like this. So it rises up and then at a certain voltage, it starts to flatten out. And um, which curve you have, to ch you have to take depends on the base current. And the question that I'll answer today is, why do we want to saturate, or sorry, why do we want to bias our transistors on this saturation line in the saturation region and not somewhere here when we're working with digital electronics. So the too long during to read answer is one, because it requires less power. So the, the power consumed is minimized and something that is less obvious, but also important in my opinion, is because of safety. And when I'm explaining things on safety, I will also explain why this region here is called the saturation region. Because it might not be immediately apparent why this is called the saturation region when you're working with uh, BJTs, so bipolar junction transi transistors. So the best way to explain this is with a small example. So I'm making this, exam I'm making this example up, but uh, it can be representative for any problem you might face in real life. So let's say you have a light bulb, so a light bulb, uh, and the manufacturer tells you that you can kind of approximate this light bulb as a resistor with value one ohm, and that you should ideally apply a current of one amp to this light bulb, or equivalently apply a voltage of one volt to this resistor. And the problem that we'll try to solve is how should we uh, bias a transistor network with this light bulb? So this is our one ohm resistor, which represents our light bulb. And we have some input current going into here. And what we'll have to decide here is our source voltage that will, will, that will, um, that will power our, our circuit overall. And let's, for the sake of the example, say that beta is 100 here, so the current gain is 100, and that the um, saturation voltage, so VCE sat, is 0 0.3 volts. Okay, so I redrew our problem right here. So we have our transistor, our one ohm resistor representing the light bulb, and our source voltage. And I told you that the, res the transistor has current gain 100, and saturation voltage 0 0.3 volts. So that means that uh, this point right here is 0 0.3 volts. And beta is 100, 100 means that uh, if I apply 10 amps, 10 milliamps uh, to, if IB is 10 milliamps, it means that I will have one amp here because 10 milliamps times 100 is one amp. If I would apply 20 milliamps to the input at the base, I would get two amps going through the collector. Um, one, so actually one amp is what we want because the, the manufacturer tells us that we want one amp going through the resistor. And so that means that uh, ideally the input current should be 10 milliamps. Now, what about VS? Well, VS is equal to VCE plus one volt, right? Because there is one volt across the resistor. So VCE plus one volt is equal to VS. So remember that because it's going to be important a bit later. And the question that we have to answer ourselves is where should we bias the transistor? So that means what should we take as VCE? Because on the one hand, we can take 0.3 volts, 
because that would give us one amp current through the resistor, but we can also bias it here, right? Because if we bias it here, let's say at one volt, we get the same current going through the resistor and the light bulb is still working as it should. So where should we bias it? And of course the answer will be, we have to bias it here and I will also explain to you why you should bias it at the saturation region. So these are our two cases. Either we bias it at 0.3 volts as in this case, or we bias it at one volt as in this case. And according to this formula here, Vs is equal to Vc plus one volt. So in this case, it's 0.3 plus one, which means 1.3 volts. And in this case, it's one plus one. So that means two volts. Uh, and the rest stays the same. And now I can actually answer the first question. Uh, so I can actually give the first reason as to why one is preferred over the other. Because if you look at the power consumption, well, we know that power is voltage times current. And in this case, the voltage is 1.3 volts times one amp, which is 1.3 watt. So that is for the left side. For the right side, where you bias it at one volt, so here, the power is equal to one volt, sorry, two volts times one amp. So it's two watt. And you see that 1.3 watt is less than two watts. And so you can already see that uh, biasing it at this point instead of this point actually is better because you're consuming less power. So that's one of the reasons why it's better to bias it at the saturation point. So the second reason for biasing your transistor in the saturation region is for safety. So when you uh, want to figure out when you want to figure out what the current will be that it was that it will be flowing through your resistor, so in this case it's it's one amp. Well, it can also be it can also be found by looking at the at the intersection between this line and this blue line. So this blue line is the resistance load curve, and you see that the intersection of the two is this point here, which gives you one amp of current. For a second case, uh, the green case, where you have a higher voltage on top here, you will also have one amp, but uh, you'll have a higher, you'll have one volt across the collector emitter. So all is fine. Of course, uh, one case consumes more power than the other. But the question that we might ask ourselves now is, well, what if I make a mistake and instead of applying 10 milliamps, at the input, I apply 20 milliamps at the input, at the uh, base of the, of the transistor. What would happen then? Well, in that case, we shouldn't look at this curve anymore. We should look at this curve and we should find a new intersection. And in the first case, when we look at the intersection with the blue, so at the, at the blue circuit that is saturated, sorry, that is biased at the saturation point, the a new intersection is that point. And so you will slightly, you will slightly increase the current. So let's say that it, it increases a bit to 1.2 amps. For the green circuit where we have biased it in the active region, we have to go all the way up here. So the increase in current is much more significant. I'm going to guess that it's about 1.8 amps going through the uh, light bulb right now. Now, 1.2 amps might still be okay for your light bulb. It might it's, It will maybe be a bit brighter, but it will still be okay. 1.8 amps, however, is a bit high. And you might actually start to break your your uh, circuitry, your electronics, or your light bulb, your, li your light bulb might pop. So this can be unsafe. You might actually break your electronics. So you see that um, in the first case where you have biased it in the saturation point, the current hasn't gone up that much. And I say this because this actually shows that the current, the output current, the collector current has actually saturated, has saturated with respect to 
an increase in the base current with respect to an increase from 10 milliamps to 20 milliamps. And so that's why we call this the saturation region because the collector current increases or the, sorry, the collector current saturates with respect to an increase in the input current, that is the base current. So those are the two reasons why you should saturate your transistors, sorry, why you should bias your transistors in the saturation region when you're utilizing it as a switch. So the first reason was because it consumes less power and the second reason is because it's safer. So I hope you learned something from this video and if there are, there are any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks.